Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Elisa and today I would like to show off my yarn stash. Um, so thank you so much for uh, clicking on today's video. Um, I have some important things to say before starting this. Uh, you know, kind of different things that we're doing today. So first of all, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, the um, huge and warm welcome that you gave to my last video. Um, that was so exciting, so refreshing, and so really, um, it helped me um, finding the courage and the strength and the energy to keep going with this channel. Uh, you know, um, Creating content, if I can say so about myself, is not always that easy because sometimes you may lack, you know, the energy to do that because it's always a, a, side, a, a sort of side hobby that you have um, along your, you know, kind of real life with your job and your house and stuff. Uh, but seeing that you enjoy my content, that you comment, um, my contents and also that you support me with you know all the comments and stuff that um, I shared with you about me filming in my bedroom and some people not liking it or finding it weird that that really helped me and I was doubting myself before but now I'm a little bit uh, more sure about what I'm currently doing let's say um, and so yes the first message is thank you so much for clicking on my videos liking them uh, you know subscribing to the channel that's always huge and also I would like to say that the day in which I'm filming which is uh, Monday the 26th of February uh, marks one year of this you know channel because on the 26th of february of 2023 i published my first video which is something like huge because when i published that video i would have never thought that this channel would have had you know more than 1500 subscribers that is absolutely crazy and huge um, i would have never thought that somebody would have liked my content i was just doing it for myself and now i must say that i'm still doing it for myself but i'm also doing that a little bit for people who are watching me uh, so i'm trying to share what i what i usually enjoy and so i just thought one thing i thought that um so this will be the last video of february 2024 but i want to dedicate march 2024 to small projects and small things to celebrate uh, these channels anniversary somehow um, and so i was thinking maybe about you know organizing knit nights and some knit alongs but you can write down in the comment if you if there's something you would enjoy like uh, knit and chats or stuff but uh, right now i just thought that we can start with a sort of yarn stash tour because i never did that and i think my yarn stash is pretty organized actually and so this is the reason why i'm not filming with my bed and behind myself as it would be normal for me but i'm standing uh, right next to my beautiful yarn stash that i love so talking about my yarn stash, um, it is well organized, I think, because I have some sweater quantities for which I mean like quantities of yarn which are enough to make a sweater or a vest or also uh, summer tops and summer tees, let's say. Um, then I have some uh, quantities which are enough for maybe socks or accessories and after that I have some leftover skeins which I kept because I think would be uh, you know useful to um, to keep as scraps or uh, to have to make some maybe color work projects because I love color work in the last I, I, I actually I've never knitted anything uh, color work but I'd enjoy to try 
this year and then I also have some yarns which I you know I do not know what to make with them uh, because I bought them at the beginning of my knitting journey just because I like them uh, but they're not very practical let's say so I, we, I think we can start with uh, today's video let's say and I will start with the sweater quantities in my yarn stash Um, so my sweater quantities are actually <laughs> at the bottom of my shelf. Um, I store my yarn in this way and I keep, you know, these like lavender bags in, in them just to um, prevent moths and things like that. And when I have some yarn to which I'm very attached, I just keep them, uh, I just keep that yarn or that quantity within a plastic bag. Uh, so you might hear uh, noise at a certain point of the video, but I think we can start. So my sweater quantities, I think we can start, oh yes, I think we can start with the bottom of my, on my shelf. Um, so first of all, let me take Oh my god, this was my uh, Christmas gift. My mom uh, gifted me a sweater quantity of Knitting for Olive. Uh, we have uh, the Knitting for Olive Merino in the colorway Marzipan and Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair in the colorway Marzipan too. Um, so I asked my mom to buy me these uh, yarn quantity. By the way, I think I have, um, I think I have like, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, five balls of Knitting for Olive uh, Merino and a little bit more of Knitting for Olive Soft Sick Mohair. Uh, but I asked my mom uh, to buy me uh, these uh, uh, sweater quantity because I want to make a sarang sweater uh, by Yegyo Knits. Uh, that sweater is the sweater of my dreams. Uh, I've thought about that sweater since it came out, uh, from the day it came out. So um, yeah, when, you know, Christmas means huge gifts. And this is the reason why I asked my mom for this. I have already tried working with uh, uh, Knitting for Olive Merino, but this will be the first time for me to, um, trying, trying uh, the soft silk mohair. And actually, I must say, it's really nice. It's really soft. I can tell you that I think it's going to peel and to shed a lot because it's already shedding. Um, but um, yeah, I can't wait to use this combination because I know it's so uh, famous and I want to understand the hype around, you know, using these two together. So this is the first sweater quantity. Then I have another sweater quantity, uh, which is this one. Like this sweater quantity consists of five balls, I think, yes, of Mota in the colorway 801, which is this beautiful, uh, you know, uh, warm beige and two balls of uh, Mota in the colorway 506, which is this beautiful, like brown, very, um, I don't know if I'm, I would say that it's warm toned, uh, but um, I think it, they pair beautifully with each other. Because I bought these because I want to make a porcelain sweater by Lene Home Samso, talking about, speaking about colorwork sweaters. And I think that this one is going to be my main color and this one is going to be my um, contrasting color. Um, I bought these two because I wanted uh, a low contrast color work uh, and maybe also a sort of monochrome uh, color work kind of sweater. Um, I love the original version which is in white, ivory and blue. 
uh, but I think that this combination is more like myself uh, and it's you know better and it's going to be better for my uh, for my wardrobe actually uh, so I've never worked with Mota by Wool Dreamers this is going to be the first time it's 100% uh, um, merino wool and it comes in 100 gram balls which are very huge actually and for each ball you have 230 meters which is great I think it's a sort of decay Yes, it's DK weight, but I think it's very uh, close also to a narrow weight or maybe a worsted weight. Yes, because the suggested gauge is 16 stitches per 24 rows, so it's a big gauge. Um, yeah, it's very, uh, it's soft, but at the same time is is not, it's a little bit dry. So I don't know how these will come out, but uh, I know that I'm not super sensitive to wool, uh, so I'm not very worried and I just can't wait to use them. I hope winter will last a little bit longer here in Italy, but unfortunately, I don't know. Next sweater quantity is a sweater quantity I'm very excited about. We have to take a bag, which is going to be very noisy. My boyfriend, who is the best boyfriend ever, bought me uh, this for uh, for Christmas. And yes, it's the Isaiah Aaron Tweed. Maybe I can take one skein out. So here it is. Look at how beautiful this skein is. Oh my God, I love it. It's the Hisaia Aron Tweed uh, in its 100% wool and uh, uh, the colorway is red. I think it's beautiful. I don't have anything like these and oh my god, it's a little bit itchy. I can already um, tell that but I'm not worried. I'm not worried because I think that with wash this is going to uh, soften. Uh, a lot and I just I just love the texture I just love the color I love the uh, flexes that you can see in here um, so I'm not worried at all and uh, if that's going to be this is going to be itchy I will wear something underneath so I think I have something like seven skeins of uh, of this wool uh, which is 100% merino, which is 100% wool, and in 100 gram skeins you get 160 meters. Um, lovely. I think with this one I'm going to make uh, a pattern by other loops. Uh, I love her patterns, but I've never knit. Uh, well, no, well, I made the twist loop top last year, but I think I want to make a sweater from her, and probably this is going to be a waffle loop loop roll neck sweater uh, of which I love the fit I love the texture and I think that this yarn will look beautifully because the pattern will be uh, simple but not simple stocking it uh, and it will be but at the same time it will be simple and easy enough to show off all the beautiful flexes and colors of this uh, gorgeous yarn I'm so excited I want to be working with this yarn I think this is going to be beautiful. Uh, I can't wait. And it smells sheepy, just so you know. Um, okay, now next uh, sweater quantity is a sweater quantity that, again, somebody uh, gifted me for uh, my graduation. It's uh, from an Italian yarn brand which is called Mondial, and it's this one. This one is Super Extra Fine. Uh, and it's 100% uh, uh, new wool and um, moulding free, of course, and it's super wash. It's a 50 gram ball for which I get 175 meters, but the gauge is almost like, yes, it's definitely a fingering weight because it's 30 stitches per 40 rows. This color is not really me but I can see myself maybe um, using a mohair to, mat to making it a little bit more matte, a little bit more muted and less, you know, baby blue. Um, 
but yeah I don't have a plan for this one but it's really super soft so I'm also thinking maybe something with negative ease would be would be nice I don't know if you have any idea for this yarn please <laughs> tell me for a 50 gram ball I get 175 meters and I actually have something like uh, seven balls of these which is enough to make a sweater maybe i could buy a mohair or maybe an alpaca strand to go with it and see if i can create some marling maybe i don't know you know um i'm not afraid to keep this one for a little bit longer in my stash because i have a lot of plans for other yarns that i have in my stash after that, I have this beautiful bag, which contains the most beautiful skeins ever. Um, so this again was another gift for my graduation for, from my boyfriend's aunt. And she's a knitter too, so this is super special. Um, I just love the color. I'm, oh my God. Like this color is really, it's, it's so me, it's so, uh, you know, it's pastel but at the same time it's very saturated and uh, yeah, it's also um, tonal but not too much because there are some variations within the skein. So this one is Araucania Yarns, uh, Natural Inspirations from Chile and it's dyed in Chile and uh, this one is Botany Lace, so it's 100% extra fine merino strands uh, and it's super soft, it's really the softest yarn ever. This yarn is very thin, it's actually, sorry, but this is written so small, uh, it's actually um, 410 meters for a 100 gram skein. Now, what I was thinking was to use this alone because I want really to make this yarn shine and to remember, to have a garment through which I can remember uh, this yarn and this yarn only. Um, and I was thinking maybe about doing the, making the Barbara blouse by, um, by Knitting for Olive, which has like is one of my dream knits actually because I think it's so hard but now I think I also have but now I think I also have the ability and the you know skills to make that I have three balls of these uh, so this is the reason why I'm also thinking that maybe I could make something with more positive ease in order to use as much of this yarn as possible um, so if you have any suggestions for yarns like this uh, and the gauge by the way is 29 stitches per 10 centimeters on a 3.25 millimeter needles uh, needle um, yes just write them in the comment down below as as always I think this one is beautiful it's really soft and squishy and I also love the fact that she really um, tried to give me something which was not you know like commercial yarn like sunless garn or knitting for olive I don't have anything against sunless garn or knitting for olive I love the yarns that I've tried from them and I will always buy from them I think but this one feels so special because there's some research behind it I think and I can really see why she chose this yarn for myself for me I think that I would have chosen this for myself too actually um, Whoa, I think it's falling down. Okay, let me put it back. Then I have another yarn quantity which I had already presented you in my um, winter knitting plans. And spoiler, I didn't use that. But this one is Florette by Mafil, which is another uh, yarn, Italian yarn brand. It's a uh, boucle yarn which I bought with the idea of making a Marin tea by Morecanit 
uh, because she gifted me that pattern when I test knitted for her the pole sweater. Um, so this one is a blue boucle yarn. It's 50% alpaca, 35% merino, and 15% polyamide. In a 50 gram ball, you get 185 meters. Now I'm contemplating: should I knit the Marenti or should I knit something else? Maybe the soft loop sweater by uh, other loops. I don't know. I still like the Marin T, but I know I should need. Uh, I will need to modify the pattern a little bit because I don't want a you know a tea made with wool or with alpaca, as in this case. Um, so I'm still debating. I had already swatched for this yarn. Yes, here it is. Here it is with uh, you know with. Uh, Boucle yarn, it's so hard to say whether mm, which is the front and which is the back. Uh, but yeah, I had already swatched with these with 4.5 millimeter needles and I had perfect gauge, so we will see. But yeah, I wanted something different at the time and one of these ball um, costed just like one euros and 50 cents. So I thought to myself, why shouldn't I buy a sweater quantity? So I bought like two, three, uh, six, six balls of these uh, Mafil Florette. And I think I'm really happy with that. Um, after that, I have another sweater quantity which I'm planning to cast on very, very soon, which is a combination between this Loch Lomond uh, by BC Garn in the colorway uh, dark brown, held together with uh, Titicaca by Holst Garn, which is an alpaca lace strand. So starting with BC Garn Loch Lomond, I've shown you this yarn so many times, which tells you that I have this yarn in my stash from, I think, last year. Yeah, probably Christmas or New Year's Eve of last year. Uh, but as you can see, there are a lot of blue flexes and white flexes, which make this yarn super special. And I decided to pair it with this thin uh, thread of alpaca to make it a little bit more warm toned. And the uh, final result is the swatch that I have here, which is this one. As you can see, I really like this. It also softened, softened a lot when washing and with washing, I must say. And yes, it's beautiful. Uh, I think the, that the alpaca warms up a little bit the Loch Lomond by BC Garn and the two of them make a beautiful match. So for the Loch Lomond you have like 150 meters in a 50 gram skein and for this uh, Titicaca you have in a 50 gram bowl uh, like 400 meters. So I had to buy only four of these to, ma to make to have a sweater quantity to go with the Loch Lomond. And yes, I, with this I want to make the uh, Harlow sweater by Kadri, not the V-neck option, but the like round and uh, mock neck option because uh, I don't know, v-necks are a little bit harder for me. I really enjoyed the pole sweater v-neck because it was a little bit higher on my, on my chest. But in general, I prefer round neck or even turtle necks when it's possible. Um, so with this Harlow sweater v-neck, uh, and it's probably going to be my next uh, cast on. Then I have, uh, uh, let's say, two sweater quantities for which I don't really know what to make because I bought them a, lot a long time ago just because, you know, I was already making some, I was already placing some orders and uh, yeah, I just bought them on a whim. Um, the first sweater quantity is this sweater quantity of Holst Garn Super Soft in the colorway truffle. Um, so I really enjoy uh, Holtz Garn because they have a huge color selection and uh, um, yes, this colorway truffle was really speaking to me because it's really uh, heathered and it has so many 
layers of colors. It's really uh, a deep color, not in the sense that it's very saturated, but in the sense that it has different levels and different uh, hues and tones of colors in this case. So it's not just a boring brown or just a boring beige, but it's a brown, brownie beige um, with a lot of, uh, you know, undertones to it. You know, I can see some blues, some purples, uh, and I'm really enjoying this. Um, for each ball, you get 287 meters, and I have uh, four balls of these. And I want to make a sweater, but I don't know what to make with it, also because it's a very thin yarn. So I think I would need to pair this with uh, a mohair or something, or maybe another alpaca strand, but I really don't have any idea. I just keep this in my stash because I think it's useful to have a fingering weight yarn to, you know, in your stash for when you feel like casting on maybe a simple raglan sweater or a very, very easy knit. But maybe in my next travels, I will find the perfect mohair or the per perfect alpaca to go with it. And I'll just, you know, and just, you know, something will pop up in my mind and I will immediately think about this whole scar and super soft and buy it. But yeah. This is not the first time that I buy Old Scar and Super Soft. I know it's very itchy and actually it's really, it's sometimes it's hard for me to, to wear it. Uh, but I know I can wear something underneath, maybe a, a an underlayer, of course. Um, so I'm not too worried about the itchiness. And I know that with washing these, you know, it is better, it's way better. Um, Another uh, sweater quantity that I bought uh, without having a true plan for it is always uh, uh, from Whole Scarn and it's made of super soft plus Titi Kaka. Uh, so I have the Whole Scarn super soft in a bag and you know it's packed in this way because uh, uh, Whole Scarn actually um, gives you the opportunity to buy some of the remainings which couldn't be made into uh, you know uh, skeins or balls uh, for a lower price and I like to do that because I think that otherwise if I do not buy them and I prefer you know entire skeins or entire balls or cakes in the case of old scarn uh, these will be like wasted and I don't like that so when it's possible, when there's a color that I really enjoy and that I really like, I just buy, buy that option of the remainings of the, uh, you know, uh, leftovers instead of buying the, you know, true cake, let's say. Uh, still, I know that this has a very thin gauge, so I decided to also buy, just wait a second, to also buy some Titicaca to go with it. So the colorway of this Titicaca is Pegasus. I've already talked about the Titicaca before. Uh, or oh, actually the Titicaca, the brown Titicaca is in the colorway Havana. Beautiful, um, warm uh, brown. And this one is in the colorway Pegasus, which is this uh, gorgeous, uh, blue, but I think it's really matte. It's really, you know, uh, heathered, not a very, you know, baby blue. Uh, goes well with uh, these super soft, from of which I don't remember the colorway. Maybe it's somewhere here. No, it's not. Well, oh gosh, it will appear on the screen. Uh, but Old Scarn also has some tables, uh, uh, thanks to which you are able to understand which colorway of which yarn goes well with the yarn you have in mind. So that's beautiful. I think um, I only have two bowls of these Titicaca. Uh, so I think I have 800 meters of Titicaca and a little bit more of the Super Soft. So what I was thinking is to use this yarn quantity for a vest. I love vests and spring is coming. Uh, so I really can't wait to, you know, find the perfect pattern to um, turn this sweater quantity into a vest. 
uh, I want something very simple, very easy. Maybe this is not my color. Uh, blue is not, you know, my usual color um, to wear. But I think it's still, it will still pair beautifully with some of my, uh, you know, piece of the pieces in my wardrobe. Like I love wearing uh, beige. I love wearing. Um, I love wearing white. I love wearing creams uh, and you know, also, um, I don't know, gray, not that much, but certainly, you know, jeans. So I will find a spot, I will find a place for these in my wardrobe for sure. Maybe this year or if not next year, uh, this yarn will not go to waste. We're finished with the sweater quantities and now we can go on to, you know, the single skeins. I don't have a lot of single skeins. Uh, I just have uh, something to make socks when I find when I have the need to make socks and you know you know an impulsive uh, cast on for socks. And uh, yes, so starting with my sock yarn um, here, I have these two cakes. I have caked them up, but they are um, by John Arben. <laughs> Exmoor socks for uh, Exmoor socks for ply. Yes. So I have two fifty gram balls, and uh, we for a total of four hundred meters. Uh, this yarn is sixty percent Exmoor blue face, twenty percent Corridale, and ten percent Zwartels, and ten percent nylon. So there's a little bit of nylon. I think this yarn is. You you know, it's not the softest. Um, it's not the softest uh, sock yarn ever, but at the same time, it's not the itchiest. And this is very important for me because I learned that I have very sensitive feet to wool. Um, the colorway is uh, oh, fuzz pig, yes. And I bought these two skeins when I was in Den Haag in the yarn shop uh, Crossen Woods which is highly, highly recommended to everybody who visits the Netherlands. I lived in the Netherlands for a, a short period of time in 2023, and certainly Crossing Woods in Den Haag was probably the best yarn shop I visited there. I also bought these two skeins in sale, for sale, um, and I really wanted them because, uh, you know, John Arbon uh, yarns uh, are very hard to find here in Italy, so finding them in the Netherlands uh, uh, just when, you know, touring a city was <laughs> the best thing that has ever happened. Um, I also have some leftover socks. Uh, this one is by Susan Crawford uh, um, and it's uh, the Lux Socks. If I'm not wrong, base. I this is a leftover from a pre previous uh, project, but I think that with the leftovers that I will have from my Exmoor socks for ply, um, I could make something. I could make another pair of socks probably because I have a lot of leftovers. I didn't weigh them, uh, but it's a lot. And then I have this yarn this sock yarn which is by Mylan White and it's a self-striping yarn. I don't remember the name of this yarn actually, but uh, if I find if, if I find it, I will, you know, it will pop up in the screen. I kicked this up and I started a simple vanilla sock, but then I lost my sock mojo and so I frogged them. And I don't know if I will ever use this. Maybe this one would be good for a stash. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't really speak to me. Probably I bought this on a whim when I wanted something to cast on and I was in the mountains, uh, you know, during the summer and I didn't have anything, any yarn, any project with me, any small project to carry around. Um, and so I bought this, but <laughs> really it's not convincing me. It's not really me. I don't think I'll ever wear this sock. One thing uh, for sure is that this sock yarn is very soft. Uh, it's not itchy, it's, yeah, it would be, you know, these socks would be easy to wear for me, but we will see. And then I have another uh, single skein 
which is oh my god this is so precious this is uh, Anverskarn sorry for my uh, terrible Danish pronunciation uh, by Yelholtzulspindari again sorry for my terrible pronunciation I bought this yarn at Sommervoglen in um, in uh, Copenhagen when I want when I went to Copenhagen uh, one year ago actually and I wanted yarn which was completely Danish and which could make me remember about the, that trip which was wonderful um, and so this one immediately came to my mind um, this one is 100 grams and you and I have 200 meters uh, the gauge is 17 stitches per 21 rows in Sockinet stitch, of course. I cannot read, uh, actually, I cannot read um, Danish, but I remember that the girl who was working at the yarn shop, which by the way is a beautiful yarn shop, Sommer Fuglen, absolutely, uh, you know, uh, a must when you go to um, Copenhagen. Uh, she told me that the yarn with which uh, this, the, uh, you know, um, this yarn is produced entirely in Denmark and so I thought it would have been the perfect souvenir skein, skein from that. The color is very simple and very dark just because I thought about um, using it to make a balaclava uh, and I have a black coat uh, so I thought that this black but really anthracite color would have been perfect and really nice to um, to pair with my uh, black coat so yeah this will be turned into a balaclava but probably not this year because uh, really um, with today's climate with these period with the climate here in Italy, the weather that we're having at the moment, I don't need a balaclava. It's really, it's already too warm to wear a, bla a balaclava. And then I have these two. So this is uh, Touch Me Mohair by We Are Knitters. And uh, the, um, you know, viewers from who have already watched the, some of my podcasts will know already these uh, uh, We Are Knitters uh, yarn because I used it for a test knit, um, the test knit of this Scala Show by Creadia Studio. Uh, they gifted me, We Are Knitters gifted me these four skeins for the balaclava and I have some leftovers which are two skeins and, and or maybe one skein, almost two skeins let's say. And I really think this could be a sweater quantity because one skein is 800 meters, it's 400 meters, sorry. So if I find some like fingering weight yarn to go with this, this can become a beautiful vest. But still I need like these sweater quantity, quantity is incomplete and this is the reason why I just keep this in my you know single skein so smaller project stash because I don't really know if I want to use this for a sweater or, if, or for anything else. So this yarn is actually, uh, let me see, 54% uh, baby alpaca, 24% mulberry silk, 22% super kid mohair, and as I told you, for a 50 gram ball, ball you get 400 meters. Now it's called touch me mohair, but the content of mohair is really low, 22%. Uh, and this is something that I've complained about when I first used this yarn. But I can say one thing about this yarn. I've been wearing my Scala shawl every day, every single day, and that shawl has not peeled yet, even if it's made of alpaca, which is something very rare, I think. I wear this when I go to work, I wear this when I take public transit, so it's very, you know, friction and the movements are daily, I guess. And that scarf is holding up so nicely and I can definitely, um, you know, this yarn is great, I think. Even if it's a little bit pricey because for a ball you, you have, uh, you pay 15 uh, euros, I guess. But I can really tell you that this yarn is great. 
and I don't know if I would buy it again because of the price but definitely I have these two skeins and I want to use them by myself and to give them away um, yeah so great yarn the colorway by the way is dusty mauve which is this beautiful like purpley pink I think it's nice I think it's really nice it pairs beautifully with my black coat and I also have a pink cap um, so yeah this is perfect for my for my wardrobe you know editing Elisa here we just realized she missed some of her beautiful skeins so here you have what I forgot to show you and this is what I bought uh, at a yarn festival here in Italy which was knitted 2023 and let's start from the left we have these beautiful skeins of uh, a, an Italian wool which is a Pecora Brogna which is a specific um, you know sheep breed it's super soft it's undyed and I bought this with the idea of dyeing it myself with the help of my uh, boyfriend's mom uh, this is a, a 50 gram ball which uh, means 225 meters and uh, yes I think it's super nice it's very uh, soft and I hope that dyeing it won't, you know, modify this thing. I just bought these two skeins because they were a little bit pricey. And I think I can make maybe a sleepover, a vest with it. But I really, really don't know. This was maybe not the wisest, uh, you know, uh, acquisition ever. But still um, super nice. Then going on, I have these two beautiful skeins from snail yarn um, I love this yarn dyer she's an, uh, an Italian yarn dyer I think she lives close to Rome or in Rome actually and this is her uh, base uh, um, er, er, her organic wool plus linen uh, in and for a 100 gram skein you get 466 meters which is so much this base consists of 70% organic wool and 30% linen and yes the colorway is rosa antico which means uh, antique rose in a sense it's this very purpley um, but um, purpley um, I'd say pink but very it's more purple purple than pink um, and yeah i bought two skeins because i wanted to make a papyrus top by ulen knitwear um, i see that as a sort of layering piece in this colorway even if it's not that neutral i think it pairs beautifully with a lot of my uh, of my uh, garments and yes still again super soft but i hope that the linen will give some structure to this top of course also the wool uh, but i think it's really drapey as you can see like these drapes not that much but just a little so we will see maybe i'll just knit a size smaller than mine to have a you know uh, a size which is better for me and after that I have two treasures of my yarn stash uh, again these are two single skeins that I bought thinking about making myself a bralette uh, so the first one is uh, let's start with the stormy blend this one is the stormy blend by Lani Vendole oh my god their yarns a dream and this is uh, this is actually made of uh, um, let's see, yes, Bronya wool again, so that same uh, sheep uh, breed of uh, this one, the white one, the creamy one, and 30% alpaca, and uh, for a 50 gram ball you get 225 meters, it's a two-ply, and the colorway is Favola di Venezia, which means uh, um, Venice's... Uh, um, story venice's fable somehow um, but i bought this colorway because it really made me think about uh, uh, money uh, water lilies and since i am a, an art historian you know i couldn't resist this one 
I, I really, it's really different from what I usually buy. Look at these, you know, variations in the in the skeins. Uh, but actually, I decided to buy this one because I wanted to make a bralette. Uh, maybe one of my favorite things, uh, or one of my of uh, naked knits uh, patterns. I think it, this would be amazing, and it's also super soft and really. I think this won't be itchy. And the same goes for the Chic Blend. Probably like the best color ever. Uh, now my camera doesn't uh, catch um, this color beautifully because it's a bit more saturated and a bit more red, I would say. Um, but this is 60% Abruzzese Wu. Abruzzo is an Italian region in, the cent in central Italy. 20% uh, alpaca and 20% mohair. So it's very, you know, luxurious, I think. And for 50 gram, you get 225 meters. It's fingering weight, yes. And the colorway is marron glacé, uh, which is super nice. I love sweets. I don't like marron glacé, but this one is super nice. And again, I bought this chic blend with the idea of making myself a bralette. And this one is even softer than the Stormy Blend here. So yeah, I really can't wait to use these colorways. They're so nice, my little skeins. Back to the video. And then I have, uh, then I have some leftovers from my, uh, you know, previous projects. First one is uh, this plate of manchelopis. Manchelopis in the colorway Blanco. I used it to make the Blomstring vest uh, by Fiber Tails and after that to make the uh, Traveler's Cardigan by Yosetta, uh, about which we will talk in the next podcast episode. Um, but yeah, this is what I have left over and I have no plans for it. Then I have these uh, uh, Sunday's Garn Double Sunday in the colorway. I don't remember the colorway, but it's, I can tell you the number, of course. It's uh, 8236. It's this very bright um, green, which is not in my color like scheme, let's say. Uh, but I just used it, uh, I, I had bought. Uh, three skeins and used only two to make a hosra hat for a friend of mine and then I have these leftovers. I thought about keeping it maybe for a future color work also because um, I love this double sunday yarn. I think it's so nice, I think it's so soft and squishy, it doesn't um, you know it doesn't twist at all and it keeps its shape. It's a very nice yarn. It's a DK weight and for a 50 gram ball you get, let me see, let me see, for a 50 gram ball I think that you get something like 125 meters. Oh my god, it's not written anywhere. Oh yes, 108 meters. And with a gauge of 21, 20 uh, stitches per 10 centimeters. So it's perfect to make maybe, I'm thinking about this Celeste sweater by Petinit, even if that one is made with Pergint. So I guess the gauge is maybe more towards the uh, worsted weight or iron weight instead of then towards a DK weight. We'll see. Uh, I just have, one skein, I think that this one can stay in my stash for a little bit longer than other things that I have. After that, I have the leftovers from my, uh, you know, labor of love of 2023, which was my mamba dress, uh, my graduation dress. And uh, I have some skeins left of Isaiah Yarn Alpaca 2 in a colorway time, and some leftovers in uh, Isair Yarn Alpaca 1 in the colorway Thyme 2, which I used together to make my Mamba dress. And this is the, this is the gauge swatch. Yeah, Mamba dress, you probably know it if you, have a, if you are a returning viewer. Um, I think this is lovely, this yarn is lovely, I love the texture, it's neither too soft. 
uh, it's very stretchy but at the same time it's it keeps its shape which is very important when you make a dress and I actually have I think uh, two bowls, almost two bowls of the alpaca one and definitely two, uh, two bowls of the alpaca two. So um, I really don't know, maybe I could make another vest with that but really I don't have any plans for it because the color is so beautiful and every time I look at it I'm just thinking about maybe keep it and use it to make a color work sweater just buying other alpaca one and alpaca two in another color, maybe a creamy one I think that could be nice, but really um, it's not in my, uh, you know, future plan at the plans at the moment. I'm just keeping it there because I don't want to part with that uh, little quantity of gorgeous yarn, I guess. And then the last part of my uh, of my stash. Oh no, I have other. Uh, yes, the last part of my stash is this. Um, is this, is this uh, little uh, bag in which I have all of my mohair scraps that I'm, or um, actually brushed alpaca scraps, which I'm keeping because I think it would be nice at a certain point to mix them all together and make a mohair sweater, a very light sweater, which would be perfect for the transition between maybe um, uh, summer and autumn or winter and spring I think it would be so nice so we have some hobby friends kit silk we have some brushed alpaca silk uh, rosarios aurora or yes a lot of a lot of leftovers but I know I will use them for sure and I'm very excited yeah, I can't wait to, you know, I don't, um, I don't use a lot of mohair in my projects, so every time I use it, I just have some leftovers and I just put them in there. And probably I will be able to make a sweater only in, you know, maybe two years, but uh, knitting is a slow, is a slow hobby, it's a slow process, you need to think about what you want to make. And so I'm, I'm simply okay with keeping all of my mohair scraps. And last leftover is probably this one which is Beiroa by Retrosaria Rosa Pomar. I absolutely don't remember the color because I lost the you know the tag uh, the the band uh, but this one is almost I think it's a sort of iron weight yarn which is um, single ply I bought it when I went to, Lis uh, to Lisbon in 2021, I guess. And I love this because it really, sometimes you can still see the blue, the, the blue, the black of the original yarn before it was dyed with this uh, gorgeous pink. And it's very nice. I made a November balaclava with this. I also made a pair of uh, mittens, the Saga mittens with this, uh, but I really don't know what to make with the leftovers. So I think that at a certain point, I will just put up all of my leftovers, which I don't know what to make with, uh, on maybe um, Vinted or Wallapop and just sell them, uh, <laughs> sell them all. I think that they will find another another home in which they will be loved. I don't know. That's the case. If that's the case. So guys, this was all for my yarn stash. I really hope that you enjoyed this tour. I know that for someone this might be a little bit boring, but really this helped me understand what I can make with what I have here. Um, and uh, what I want to simply give away because they maybe some of these skeins do not have any space uh, in my stash anymore. Um, if you have any specific idea of some about some of the uh, you know some of the um, yarns that I showed you today uh, please write them down in a comment below and of course if you enjoyed this video and want to see more um, subscribe to the channel because this always helps, helps me so 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 much uh, if you like this video please give it a like and i'll see you in the next one bye bye and happy knitting mm -hmm.